Hello there, this is the Bookkeeper Master on YouTube. Welcome to this video. This is another Sage 50 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through tools and options on Sage. Basically, I'm going to go through features on Sage that you're probably not aware of, things you can tweak that can save you a lot of time, things you can tweak that are very handy to know that will just make your job a bit easier. This is Sage 50 Cloud. The same tutorial can be used for Sage 50 accounts, Sage Instant accounts. It's all the same features. It's all done the same way. So we're going to start off by going to settings at the top here and click on configuration. And there's a couple of tabs here that I want to point out to you. The first is tax codes. This is the VAT codes, the sales tax codes. This is handy to know because you have the full list. You can view the full list of tax codes, but you can also edit the codes. So you can see what is 20% VAT. You know, if VAT ever goes to 21% or down to 18%, that can be edited just here. So this is where you'll come. But you can see the lower rate and also exempt, non-VAT, that sort of thing. So this is where the VAT codes are. Now something else I wanted to show you was fixed assets. If you use the fixed asset feature, this is where you edit the categories for fixed assets. So you can edit category one to be computer equipment, number two, vehicles, etc., etc. Going back to settings, we can go to company preferences. This is where we would change the company name and details. But what I wanted to point out to you was the VAT tab here. This is where you can enable making tax digital where you can enter your VAT number and just change VAT settings such as your VAT login details. The next tab is Sage Pay. If you're going to be using Sage Pay, you can enable Sage Pay on this tab here. Go into settings and customer defaults. This is when things get really exciting. You know, when you add a new customer or click on a customer account and the terms haven't been agreed and you get that box that appears and terms have not been agreed you can actually tick that box here to have terms agreed, uh, agreed as a default it's usually unticked as a default so if you have the terms agreed ticked then click OK whenever you add a customer the terms will already be agreed you won't have to remember to uh, to do that there are other customer defaults too that can make your life easier, such as the sales code um, and the tax code, the department, and there are other things too. Going over to aging, you can change the period day for the age debtors report. So on the age debtors report, you have period one, period two, period three, period four. You can actually change those days here. The default is 30, 60, 90, and 120 days. But let's say you want it week by week, so 7, 14, 21, 28. You can do that here. But you can also age them as per calendar month by clicking on here. Now, the same thing exists with supplier defaults. You can have default tax codes and nominal codes, departments. You can also have... Terms agreed, default, and once again you have the aging for the age creditors report. You can do that here in supplier defaults. Now where do I want to go to next? I want to go over to tools and go to options. Now on options, there's some great defaults and things um, on these tabs. The first is to do with the wizards. If you don't like the wizards, wizards on Sage, you can get rid of them by clicking hide wizard options. The same with the tutorials. You can get rid of the grid lines if you don't like them on Sage. Now going across to colors, you can actually change the color of Sage. This is the default color that I see everyone use like this light color. But you can actually make it a lot darker if you wanted to, and you can even make it white. Now you can also color code each module. So you can have um, green for customers, red for suppliers, nominal codes could be like this dark purple color, you know, you've got pink. You can make like a nice 
pink or sage if you wanted to. It's all here. You just change the colors. You click OK and then it will change that for you. So you can see we've got green here now. If I go to the bank, we've got some nice pink showing. So tools, options, and colors. On view, this is where you can turn on and turn off dashboards. Now dosh dashboards are incredibly annoying for some people. So they don't have this ticked. Um, process maps are even more annoying. Um, so if I get rid of both of them, some people, they come to customers and they end up having this sort of screen appear, which is very frustrating. You know, the list is so much better and easier to use. The dashboard is okay. Um, there's actually nothing showing on my Sage because I have very little data on Sage. But if you go to tools and options, you can enable and disable those process maps and dashboards. You can also change the default. So if you want a dashboard or a process map, but you want the customer list to be the default when you click on customers, then you can do that on the drop down list. Here, you can also change the initial view and other things. Now, something else I wanted to mention was the quick keys on Sage. So if you're entering some information, say an invoice for a customer, you put in all the details, the date, the nominal code, the amount, the tax code. You then move on to the next line. It's likely you're going to have another invoice for that same customer, and it could be for suppliers, also bank payments, bank receipts. Anytime we have this sort of box, even journals, where we enter data, basic data entry, then you can just click F6 to duplicate whatever was above. So instead of looking for 4,005, say, um, 4,009, each time you want to use 4,009, you can just click F6 to copy from what was above. Say so you manually put in that data in. The same can happen with the customer. If you've got 10 invoices for the same customer, just keep clicking F6. It's a lot quicker than bringing up the customer account or typing in the customer account each time. Now, sometimes there's a line created on Sage and it was created by mistake. You don't need that line. Sage won't actually let you save if the line has zero value. So you end up having like this zero value transaction. You have to go back and delete everything. You don't actually have to do that. If you click F8, it will clear lines for you. So whatever line you're highlighted on, if you click F8, it will clear the line for you. Now alternatively, if you want to add a line, just click F7 and new lines will appear. So it's F6, F7 and F8. Hopefully these quick tips and options and things have been helpful to you. Please go over to my website, freebookkeepingaccounting.com. I have plenty of free Sage content. Just go and have a look. It's all there for your benefit. All of it's for free. None of it requires any sort of registration at all. Thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you in another video.